The future is here. Have you ever wanted a see-through e-reader? One that displays all of your favorite e-books on a paper screen, but with a translucent slate of glass? Well, unfortunately, that's not what this is. No, this is just a piece of glass with a light on it. But it is being received in such a way that begs the question, why did Dasung make this? Although in the nicest way possible, we're not too surprised it came from Dasung. They've always been ones to think outside of the box, we'll say. This is an oil-resistant slab of tempered glass with a light on it that is said to light up e-books and e-readers that don't have lights, even though 90% of e-book readers have lights. Well, without further ado, let's check out what the Ming is all about. Now, as we said, if you missed the top of the hour, no, this is not e-paper, this is not e-ink, it's not even an e-reader, but it comes from a company that exclusively makes e-paper devices, aside from a couple AliExpress device things that are just, you know, random electronics like translators. Let's get into it. Tempered piece of glass, it's got a little bit of a warpy look to it as well. It almost looks like there's a fuzzy layer of pixelation on top. We're not entirely sure what the purpose of this is, much like they've made a couple other things that are questionable, but you know, because this doesn't have like a latch or anything. So logic says, you can see me in there, hi, that you're going to be holding this with whatever you're using. So let's get into it. We have a couple things here. Let's start with an e-reader because it is said to help out ebook readers and ebooks and books. So we're going to have the glow light off on this onyx right here, of course, and we'll turn the lights off over there in a second, but let's just see how this works. So you press and hold one of the buttons to get it going, I believe button up. There you go. So you'll see the LEDs right there. There are 10 of them right there. And as you press up, it gets brighter and brighter. So half half here to show you guys, there's 10 levels of brightness. And as you go brighter, you'll see. There's almost some particles that are floating around inside this piece of glass. The light perfectly illuminates the glass, much like the gel layer of an ebook reader. The thing is, this composition, this technology, this application is already inside every single e reader. When you go over here and you turn the glow light on, that's doing this. This is doing that. That's that's what it does. That's that's the thing inside here. So let's see how this works. So we have it on the let's turn it to the brightest because that just makes the most sense. We'll worry about everything else later. There we go. Let's turn it to the brightest and put it over here. Half half you'll see that it does illuminate it a little bit, but it also makes it extremely reflective because I don't see the camera in there. And now I see the camera and the microphone and everything else. Conversely, if I just turned the glow light on here, you wouldn't see any of that. But this adds the piece of glass in the way that isn't matte to add all the reflection and take away from the matte nature of the inherent e-paper screen. So in that, not sure what that's doing. Now, to be fair, they also say it works on books. So we have a manga here. And guess what? There's no glow light on it because it's a manga. So let's put this over here. And again, we'll turn the lights off in a second. So you can see half half here. There's only one style of light on this. So it ends up making it look very yellow and orange, but it does illuminate the manga pretty well. And if it's in front of the manga, doesn't really hinder the experience, but the usability of it all is that I'm gonna have to, this is real time right now, by the way. And here's a studio light for you guys. So I have my manga here, I'm going to have to put it in front of here, and then put it over here. Oh, I have some reflection. There we go. That's a lot better. And then maybe I say, oh, that's too bright. Let's turn it down. Oh, that's good. Okay. Now I'll turn the page. And then maybe I'll put it up top here and hold it like that. Oh, it's not grabbing the bottom. Okay, I'll just move that down. So you see, this is the realistic use of it all, is that there's not really a way or a a, an application in which you hold this and you're kind of always touching the panel and fighting with the reflections but to be fair it's a light so let's turn off the lights and see what happens 
Now you can really see what's going on here. It almost looks like there's these individual alternating particles of black and white, black and white. There's also some inconsistencies in that every time you touch it, it leaves a fingerprint. And also it seems that there's a little bit of dead pixels in a way, although it's not using pixels. Let's see how you use this at night. And remember, there is a way to use this. For example, if I have it this way, it's going to look different than that way. If you hold it the other way, it hinders the experience to a point you can't see what's going on. So you have to hold it this way. Now, let's just realistically look how I'm going to pick this up and read my manga. Here I am, everyone. All right, here's my book. Oh man, it's really dark. Can't see anything. Oh, I have my Ming. All right, get my Ming here. Perfect, let's read this page. All right, put it up there. Wow, this guy's really attacking that guy. And then you go down. You wanna read the other side, so you have to cross your arms or maybe alternate your hands to get it over to that side. Now you can see the page. It illuminates it quite well, I must, I must say. It's very clear, but make sure you have it to a point where it's not too far away. As you move it far away, you start to, your eyes draw in at the pixelation of the actual panel and it breaks immersion. You have to have this flat up against what you're using it on. If you don't, it's not gonna work. If I have to turn the page, I gotta put my Ming to the side, turn the page, get ready again. I have to go like this or else I'm gonna cross what I'm seeing. There you go, now I can see it. It works really well on books, but it's unwieldy because where do I put this? I can't put it like that because that's scan it up and down like that. I can't put it at the top. It doesn't stay anywhere. It stays if I close it, but then I can't read it. So it's not really sure how to hold this at any given time, but let's give it another chance and let's bring in an e-reader into the equation. This is the Onyx Color e-reader we just showed you. So we're gonna put this over. That looks decent, although it looks a little bit fuzzy, like so. And it adds reflection. You can see the camera and you can see me in the shot now, whereas you can't before. And now let's compare the Ming on a piece of paper versus an e-reader with a glow light. Now granted, you might not have a glow light on your e-reader. That's a fair assumption, because if you don't have one, then the Ming comes in handy, because it obviously uses a light. So there we go. So now I'll get a glow light on the Onyx, uh, make it a little bit more balanced right there. And you can see there's no reflection. It's built into the thing. It's not clunky and cumbersome. And I don't need to ever hold anything over the page because it's already integrated into the stack. So that begs the question, what is the Ming for? Well, it's for situations like this where you have a manga or something and you want the technology of what is inside an e-reader glow light in the palm of your hand. In that case, it's kind of cool. It's kind of cool to have a packaged representation of what happens inside ebook readers, your Kindles, your Onyxes, your Nooks, your Kobos, your everything. That is that. They've added this bar, nicely finished and tooled, so you can hold on to it and charge it up as you see fit. I wouldn't ever recommend this on an ebook reader. Most importantly, the reason because 98% of every single e-paper device on the market has this already inside, but I may recommend it for people that want to read at night. But honestly, that's really what a book light is for, because if you have just a simple book light, it would do, I think, a little bit more of a consistent and better job at this, because the book light doesn't add reflection, it doesn't hinder your experience if you're holding it the wrong way, and it doesn't cost a hundred dollars. If your e-reader doesn't have a glow light, well this fills that need. It's made out of tempered glass instead of standard glass, so when it breaks it turns into little cubes and it's not going to break the bank. Although that begs the question, who's going to buy it? It's not expensive, but it is still a $100 light. And although it does fill the need of people who need lights on e-readers, it's dwindling day by day because ebook readers majoritively have lights. All things considered, this is interesting to say the least. Dasung has always thought out of left field when it comes to products like the A4, the Dasung Link that just mimics your smartphone screen, and a bunch of others. So we'll have to see where this takes us in the future. For GoodyReader.com, this is Peter. Oh my God.